Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Garbage Horror. 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 Yes. Yeah, what, what, what's going on? We got stuff now. Oh, when did this happen? Last night. Oh. Okay then. Probably yeah. while you were asleep. <laughs> I'm kidding, you were out here working, you musty. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> yes, we have stuff now in this room, and elsewhere in this haunt too, it's worth mentioning. But yes, yes, we are back continuing the haunt review series after a brief hiatus due to a minor illness. Right, I've been a little sick. Glad you're feeling better. Glad you're not doing the phlegmy thing for us today. Yeah. Nor the sniffle, nor any of that fun stuff. We're back. And we have a lot of haunt reviews to get through. We have three to record now that we'll be getting up in the course of the next week. Right. And then after that, three more to do haunts that we're yet to visit. Yeah, I know. So we've got to get busy, man. So yeah. We are busy. They can see it. I know. They can see it. Chamber right. of Horrors, Jefferson, Louisiana. Now, we did this as part of the House of Shock run. We did those two mm -hmm. in the same trip. And i got to admit, going into it, I was concerned this was not going to be a very good trip. Right. I had my concerns. And it's not because of like anything from the like, immediately previous year. It's just historically, yeah, we've had issues with these two haunts and being kind of maybe not disappointments, but not being highlights. Right. So, but still, we went and we did it. We did Chamber of Horrors first, and I gotta say, I was actually fairly impressed this go around. Yeah. I, I, and we do have to throw in our usual caveat: we worked for Chamber of Horrors back, back when they were in applause, applause. Blah blah and blah. They took off a few years and came back to the city. <clears throat> all in all, I have about as much clout at Chamber of Horrors as you know. Is a cloud. Yeah, but <laughs> cloud you know. I don't know why it's said a cloud. I don't know either. Anyway, but it's okay. I have zero cloud. Anyway, there. we we do have to mention that we did yes. work for them at one point. Yes, yes, fair enough. But yes, that is that is true. But it's also completely has no bearing on this review. Oh no, <laughs> not at all. Okay, go back to the previous reviews. You'll see what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, the main problems we've had with Chamber of Horrors historically has been a that it always felt like a short haunt right? Um, for the amount you pay especially. And it also felt like it was a rushed haunt in that regard. Yeah. They, they, they had some construction difficulties. And also it felt like it was understaffed. Right. Some very, yeah. very good ideas, some very creative sets, some right. great stuff in there, but the, the complete package. Right. And previously, you know, they had had some technical issues due to the space, like a lot of light leaks yes. and stuff. And that stuff's been fixed. Yeah, and this is the thing. Um, we know from speaking with people there that they actually were allowed to stay in the space year-round this time. Right. They which, hadn't been able to before. No, they had not been able to before. This year they could, and that meant 365 days of work, improvement, tinkering, growing, improving, and yeah. it flipping shows. It does. It shows. Um, you know, the thing about Chamber of Horrors, it's kind of the old spook house style of haunt. I've used that term before. Right. Where it's like room to room, everything is different. Every yes. sequence, every there's no plot, there's no theme. You'll be in an execution chamber one second, you'll be in an exorcism chamber the next. Right. It's ban it's so it's it's completely random. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot of fun at the same time. Yeah. And this year there were a lot of actors in there. Right. They did a lot with a prop based layout and redesign. They've added at least three new rooms, maybe more. I think four actually. I think they added four. Yeah. We keep going between three and five. Somewhere between three and five new There's rooms. There's new stuff is yes. what it comes down to. And it does love the storage room. Love the storage room. That room actually, <laughs> I think it's one of my favorite rooms I've seen this season yeah. at any haunt. Actually, yeah, it, it's it's kind of hard to describe without giving it all away. Right, just say storage room. Storage People room. know exactly. But it's a very creative, very well done room, mm -hmm. and it, it felt very natural. Oddly yeah, enough. and it uses prop based layout, yeah, it's prop -based which was layout. something you were hoping to see this yeah, time. Yeah, and prop based layout for those who don't know is when you have a room and you make people go around stuff in the room rather than using walls to set the path. Right. And so like if you have like a gurney in the middle of an operating room and they have to do a 360 on the gurney that's prop based layout. Right. Um, that's a common example of it. So yeah, they did a lot of that and it really seemed to extend the la the walkthrough of it a lot. It, it, felt, mm -hmm. it felt on par time wise with the mortuary this year. Right. Yeah, it, it, I think it actually wound up being a minute or two longer. Yeah, it, it's, it's at least in the and ballpark. And they've got less space. <clears throat> yes, they do. They actually, it, it's a pretty decent walkthrough this time around. And like I said, well acted, well staffed, um, all in all, pretty good job. Sets are really pretty this year. <clears throat> yeah, and they fixed the light leak issues as you noted. Yeah. From a technical standpoint, I'm not going to say it's perfect. No. But for what it is, yeah. it's really, really good. And what it is, is a, it's serving a market that is not really served well in this community. Right, it's, it's a pretty underserved market. And that is that 
pretty much anybody can go to this. This is a family haunt. This yeah. targets families. You can you, go you, if you're a teenager yeah. or even younger. We yeah. we were behind somebody who was carrying a kid. Yeah, Dad might have been a little too young that for my That might have been a little too young, yeah. But, but the main point is, you know, we roll up there. We see uh-huh. teens and kids. We see that crowd. And right. that's something you don't get at the Mortuary or the House of Shock. The Mortuary skews a little younger than House of Shock. Right. But it's still, you know, mostly tweens to teens. Right. This actually is teens and kids and their parents. Right. And the House of Shock skews far older. If you, you bring a child to the House of Shock, they will mock you there for being a bad parent. Well, yeah. Be- because, well... Probably deservedly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be fair. Yeah. Probably deservedly. Um, but, yeah, it's actually... It serves that market, and I think it serves it well. I mean... Mm-hmm. For what it is, it's great. Now, the gripe I do have, and it is a fairly significant gripe, is the price point and the pricing in general. Okay. Um, because, okay, the haunt is $18 a ticket, Flappy. Right. And that price is just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, okay, let me explain what I mean by that. A, <clears throat> I do think it's a smidge high, mm-hmm. but, but that's not the reason I think it's wrong. Uh-huh. I think it's wrong because it's cash only. Right. And the problem is, when you're cash only, A, your price always feels higher than it is. Right, it does. Because that, that act, and this they've actually done studies on this. You can check this out. Right. They've done studies on this, where when you're turning over physical cash, you inflate the cost in your mind, or, mm-hmm. or you deflate it when you use debit cards, which way you want to look at right. it. Right. One way or the other, the cost changes between the two. This is one of the reasons why haunted attractions, people spend way more money uh, with debit card and credit card. Yeah. So something to think about there. Um, But also, for us, we had to go to the Dollar General or something in the same shopping center. Dollar Dollar a store. It was a store. In the same shopping center. That we could get cash cash back back at. And mind you, we did buy some stuff for the haunt there. That was nice and fun. But we have to get 40 back. Right. Which essentially means your haunt is $20. Yeah. Because I'm not going to do a whole hell of a lot with four ones. Right. Um, that that's pretty much wasted money. Yeah. So you know, if it were fifteen dollars and I could get thirty back, then it would actually yeah. be fifteen per ticket. But yeah, if you're or if they had fifteen dollars and had a five dollars shirt, I could buy. Yeah, something like that. I'm not wearing a, a, a house. Of, yeah, they had no merch at all, which is yeah. odd. Um, but yeah, this is a problem they could fix tomorrow. They could fix it by the end of this review. <laughs> right. They could go to Best Buy. They could get a, a, a square reader. It is. Mm-hmm. And they could be taking credit cards tomorrow. Yep. And I think that would behoove them greatly. Yes, it takes a percentage away, but if people are more comfortable handing money, if people spend more money with you, it makes up the difference. Right. Um, so that's my big thing is the price point just felt wrong, mostly because it was cash, I think. Right, yeah. I think that's most of the feeling of wrong. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it didn't ring like a good price point to me. But from a time standpoint, it's, like I said, it's about the same time as the mortuary, but it's far cheaper than the mortuary. The mortuary right. is currently the expen- most expensive haunt in the city. For these weeks, it's thirty dollars. Right. And yeah, you know, you decide yourself if you're getting twelve dollars extra value out of the mortuary. House right. of Shock is twenty five. And that's the other kind of worry I have is they're about a mile from the House of Shock, mm-hmm. and their price points inching closer and closer to the House of Shocks. Right. But still. But they do serve a different market, a, as you a, said. A completely different market. I do not. Granted, see- you know, younger kids are going to have less money. Yes, and that is that's another thing to think about. Yeah. But yeah, the thing about it is this: they, I did not see the House of Shock and Chamber in any way competing. No. If they were closer to the Mortuary, yeah, I might rethink this competition thing because there's some more overlap with the market. Right. But the House of Shock and Chamber should have very different markets here, and they serve their market pretty well, I believe. Mm-hmm. And if they're able, and here's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping they're able to stay in that space all year again. Right. Put another 365 days into it. Yeah. And then really have an even more kick-ass haunt next year. Right. That's what I'm excited yeah. about. This this really showed what they can do when they stay in the space. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, kudos to a vastly improved Chamber of Horrors. Had a lot of fun with you guys this mm-hmm. year. Um, definitely consider accepting credit card, though. Yes. I think it would behoove Please. you greatly. And like I said, the Square Reader is free. It's actually not. It's it's real easy to do. Right. Well, any final thoughts on Chamber of Horrors? No. Great attention to detail this year. Yeah. You know, the work good, shows. Good new rooms. Yeah, work shows, and that seems to be the theme this year. Mm-hmm. Well, on that note, everyone, 
I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Garbage Horror Out of the Can Haunt Review 2016 doing the Chamber of Horrors in Jefferson, Louisiana. We'll see you guys next time.